This is me in 2018, a fairly clueless version of me that knew nothing about property, let alone the intricacies of investing. I was 21 and having just got married, I was working a simple nine to five office job, living paycheck to paycheck. Fast forward to now, I've been involved in over 30 million pounds worth of property deals and property has transformed my life. So how did I do it? And how could you do it too? Well, I'd suggest starting with gaining the fundamental understanding of the all important question, how does property investing actually work? When I first started researching about property, it wasn't because I wanted to be this property investor. I actually quite honestly didn't know what was involved in being a property investor at all. Like many of us, I was brought up to believe that I needed to go to university, get a really well paid job, get onto the property ladder as soon as possible, which to be fair, that in itself isn't actually a bad piece of advice, but pay down my mortgage as quickly as I can in time for my retirement. Now, because I was a 20 year old free spirit, and I wasn't ready to settle down or decide exactly where it was that I wanted to live and spend the rest of my life. I came up with a really brilliant brainwave, genius idea, buying an apartment in Manchester where I live. What if I put somebody else in there and they can pay the mortgage for me? That way I can travel around, be where I want, whenever I want, and, and have the flexibility of life, but having somebody paying down my mortgage from an early age. Now, obviously when I had this brainwave, I had to go and tell everybody about it because that's the kind of person I am. And the more I shared this with my friends, the more I realized this brainwave of an idea that I had wasn't actually as revolutionary as I thought. Turns out that it's just property investing. Now, even at the time when people told me this is what property investing is, I still didn't even realize the endless benefits of actually being a property investor because not only can somebody be paying my mortgage for me, but there are a whole load of other benefits for being a shrewd and savvy property investor. And that was the difference between people being super, super wealthy property investors and just your average Joe. Now, before you understand exactly how property investing works, you need to understand the actual reason why people decide to invest. And this is where I started. There are four key things about property investing that can genuinely change your life. Number one is something called capital growth. What this means is the property goes up over time in value. Even if you looked at how much your grandparents bought their house for, how much your parents bought their house for, and how much property prices are worth today, you'll realize there's a trend that over the long term, property goes up in value. Reason number two why people invest in property is something called inflation. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this, but what it basically means is the cash in your bank decreases in value over time. Things become more expensive. Anyone remember when a Freddo used to cost 5p? They now cost 30, 40p. It's an absolute joke. But the whole point is, and that's a great example of something called inflation, things become more expensive. So as things become more expensive, but your bank balance stays the same, your cash is worth less every single year you hold on to it. Point number three, and this is the one that people jump to as the main thing, which is rental income. Not only can somebody be paying off your mortgage, the same amount as your mortgage, and you can be cost neutral, someone can actually be paying you more rent than your mortgage costs, leaving you with profit every month, which is guaranteed income, and for what a lot of people call passive income. And the fourth reason why people decide to invest in property is leveraging debt to build your wealth. If you wanted to go and buy stocks, you can't raise capital to go and buy some Apple shares, but you can raise capital from a bank. You could borrow money from a bank and buy a house. You could buy a 200,000 pound house with 50,000 pounds and 150,000 pounds comes from the bank. If you had 50,000 pounds and went to the stock market, you can't buy 200,000 pounds worth of stocks. You can only buy 50,000 pounds worth of stocks. So property is a vehicle in which you can leverage other people's money very, very easily. As I said, I'm not going to go into loads of detail about the previous points I just mentioned, but I have actually created a free online course about this and a bunch of other stuff that you can access completely for free. There's no strings attached. The link will be in the description. So if you wanted to go into more detail about any of this stuff, you can click the link in the description and you can access this stuff completely for free. So how does property investing actually work? And I'm gonna break it down into six simple points 
and explain exactly what you need to do step by step to understand how you invest in property. And there's a whole bunch of different property investment strategies. I'm going to just be talking about the simplest form of property investing, which is when you buy a property and you rent it out and you make a profit over the long term. What we're talking about in this video is just the simplest, most straightforward, vanilla buy to let property investment strategy. So step number one is you need to start with a pot of cash. Now, I know that seems like a pretty difficult place to start, but either you need to save the money or you need to raise the money. The money doesn't have to be yours, but you do need to start with some level of capital. A lot of people talk about getting into property with no money. Often those are property businesses, not property investing, where you buy properties to hold long term. If you want to buy a property and hold it long term, you have to start with some level of capital. My first deal that I ever did was a joint venture. So I put in 50% of the money and my friend put in 50% of the money. We bought bought a house, renovated it and sold it and we made a profit. So it doesn't have to all be your money, but you do need money to start with. Step number two is you need to find a good property investment. I've done a bunch of videos on how to find a good deal or where to find deals. So you can check those out on my YouTube channel. Also part of the free course that I created, you can see a whole bunch of a section there all about how to find those deals. But what makes a good property investment? Well, as long as it's not a complete whole of an area and if the rent is cash flow positive, so i.e. does the rent that you make not only service the debt, i.e. pay for the mortgage, but also give you a nice clear amount of profit afterwards. And is it in an area that can increase in value over time. Those are the three core things that I look at when I'm looking to find a good deal. Step number three is that you need to purchase the property. Now you can leverage debt if you want to. And as an example, let's just assume that you've bought a property where the purchase price, the stamp duty and the legal costs and everything like that comes to about 150,000 pounds. Step number four is you need to add value. If you can, if there's any capacity to add value, you might have bought this house for 150,000 pounds. If you can replace the kitchen, if you can paint the house, if you could put new carpets in, new bathroom, boiler, anything like that to add the value, increase the quality of the property, you'll be able to increase what's called the equity of the property, the value of the property. So you will have more value, house value in that particular deal. But let's just assume worst case scenario, there's no value to be added in this house that you've bought for 150,000. Step number five, once you've got the property all spruced up and ready to go, you want to rent it out. Now, if you want to sell the property, you could spruce it up and sell it and make a profit. As I say, this is probably more like a property business because you're buying to sell, you're, you're trading properties. Whereas if you're property investing, i.e. investing for the long term, you might want to spruce the thing up and then rent it out and hold on to it for 10 years. So in this example, let's say your house is worth 190,000, you've spent about 160,000 to buy it, you rent it out for a thousand pounds a month and your mortgage payments are about 580 pounds on a property like this. That means that every single month you take your rent, take off your mortgage payments, you're getting a profit of about 400, 420 pounds per month, every single month. For a lot of people, because this is an investment and they want to make it as hands off as possible, what you can do is you can get a management company to deal with finding the tenants and letting it out to the tenants as well and managing those tenants through that tenancy period. Step number six is let your capital grow. So let's assume that over 10 years, your property's gone from being worth 150,000 pounds to 250,000 pounds. Your rental income over the last 10 years has given you 60,000 pounds worth of profit. So just that 60,000 pounds alone has almost doubled your initial deposit that you put in, because again, we leverage our money, we borrowed money from the bank. But then also you've gained 100,000 pounds worth of property value, so that when you come to sell it, you've got your 100,000 pounds, your 60,000 pounds worth of rent, and your initial deposit back. It's pretty good actually, isn't it, when you think about it. So how does property investing actually work? Well, this is it in its simplest form. Like I said earlier, why do people invest in property? There's a whole bunch of different reasons, but combining the four reasons that I said, you're able to buy a property, buy an asset, increase its value, leverage money to increase your wealth. And the alternative, there are a few other investment alternatives, but if you just leave your cash sat in the bank, it's just going to decrease in value over time. So either you keep the money in the bank and let your money shrink over time, 
or invest it and multiply it. Get your cash flow coming in, get the capital growth coming in, so that in 10 years time, you can be tripling, quadrupling the money that you started with rather than that capital just shrinking in value. Now, I get loads of people commenting in my videos saying, oh, what about capital gains tax? And what about this? And what about that? I can't cover everything in every single video that I do. This is not an exhaustive guide on how to invest in property. This is just giving you an overview, a basic idea of how it works and why it is so valuable to invest in UK property. If you want to learn more about it, I've got free videos on YouTube. I'm on Instagram, TikTok. I've created that free course that the link will be in the description for you to find out more. And if you wanted to invest in property as well, I run a company that helps people build property portfolios. The link for that will also be in the description. But I hope you found this overview of how property investing actually works to be helpful. And if you have found it helpful, make sure you click the like button that's the word like button drop a comment with any questions that you have in the comment section and i'll try and get back to everybody that comments and i'll see you guys in the next video